And now to our next segment, the Convergent Design Nano Flash. You guys are shooting tapeless now. Maybe you're shooting with tape, I don't know. Uh, but you might want to be shooting tapeless. You want a nice, quick way of getting the footage that you spent all day shooting into your computer and not have to spend all day at your computer to get the footage in. There are a couple of ways of doing it. Among my favorites are the Aja Key Pro, recording to a ProRes 422, like right on a hard drive. A lot of my clients have said, Jesse, you're leaving out an entire segment of your customers, and that's the Avid guys, the people that need MXF files, or anybody else that's not using Final Cut Pro. They want QuickTimes, they want MPEGs, or maybe they just have issue with the size of the Aja Key Pro. It's big and bulky, and it's hard to mount on a camera. What can I say? You're absolutely right. Luckily, our friends at Convergent Design have a competing product, and it's the Nano Flash. Nano because it's tiny, easily camera mountable. You've got a quarter 20 threaded screw here. You could put a Noga arm, you could put a shoe mount. A lot of ways to get this stuck right on your camera. What cameras might you want to mount it to? Well, first let's talk about what the Convergent Design is doing. When you're recording to tape or you're recording to an S by S card or a P2 card, you're taking a very, very high quality, uncompressed signal off the chip of your camera and compressing it down to whatever codec your camera happens to record in. So you're sort of locked into the compression rate, the bit rate, you're locked into a couple of restrictive ways of recording your video. If you want to get your stuff quickly into a computer for editing, you're going to want something that's tapeless, you're going to want something that's digital, and you might not like 35 megabits per second on an EX3, 100 megabits per second on a DVC Pro HD camera. So the Convergent Design offers you a wide variety of recording codecs. You can come in HDSDI or HDMI and record in the codec of your choice. It's got a couple different options. You can record in MPEG, either in long GOP, right, or iframe only if you're afraid of sort of group of pictures interpolation. If you want to have a discrete frame for every one of the frames that you're having, set this thing to iframe only. If you're cool with the long GOP, you want to get sort of more time out of less um, storage space, you can set it into long GOP and still get very high quality recordings. What does it record to? Compact flashcards. Check that out. 16 gig compact flashcard. It's got two slots. So, you connect the device to your camera. You can power it either with the supplied power adapter, four pin Hiroshi. You can either connect it like that with AC, or more effectively, if you do have it mounted on your small style camera, you can get a battery or an Anton Bauer to four pin Hiroshi that'll plug right into this thing and power it all day, right? As long as your camera's on, your, your device is gonna be on. And you're recording in a variety of formats. We, we, we started to get on them. They were MPEG, long op, or iframe, MXF files, or QuickTime files. So whatever you're gonna start out editing in, you can start out recording in. So there's no transfer, there's no ingest, there's no conversion. It's just a simple file transfer from your compact flashcard directly to your editing system. It's pretty awesome. Couple other important features. Because it's got HDSDI and HDMI in and out, it actually acts as a converter. You can come in HDSDI and out both HDMI and HDSDI live. Some guys find that very useful, so you can come off to your, you know, sort of consumer style HDMI monitor and still go out HDSDI, say you've got a switcher, that you've got to uh, do a live switch at a concert. Very effective method of getting sort of a consumer level HDMI output into your professional level HDSDI products. Really cool. One thing that you might ask is, Jesse, um, yeah, you're recording in a variety of different codecs, a variety of different bit rates, how long can I record to these compact flashcards? And to help me out with that, I'm gonna ask Verge to bring up a little, uh, a little graphic that Convergent Design sends us. So check out this chart. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna hang, hang out here for a minute. There's no pause button, unfortunately, on our live broadcast, but you can sort of you know, soak this information in. You can record up to 280 megabits per second. Very high quality, so you're, you're not really suffering the compression that your camera's built-in codec might have. You can really double it. So 280 megabits per second, that's about double the bit rate of HD cam. You can really get lossless recording uh, where otherwise your camera would, would be stuck compressing it. So we're talking about 164 gig card, giving you about a half an hour at the highest bit rate, 280 megabits a second, or uh, 150 minutes at the lowest standard definition bit rate, 50 megabits per second. Uh, let's, let's get that chart out of here. I mean, uh, as exciting as it is, charts can sometimes be boring. But, uh, 
If you need a method of getting 422 awesome MXF QuickTime or MPEG recording and you're sick of tapes and you're sick of SBIOS cards and you're sick of P2 cards, connect this Nano Flash to any camera that you've got and it's really going to help you out. If you've got questions about that, if you want to hear about it, give us a call. We happen to know a little bit more about it and uh, it's a lot of fun. But